G'day folks. Well, for today's equipment autopsy, we're going to look at this Lennox Elite Series condensing unit. Uh, this is a heat pump one. It's different to the last one I found. A bit, lot bigger. Uh, three phase, 415 volt. Uh, it's a model HP 29653-3M. You can see in there. Serial number you can see. Uh, got a defrost board obviously because it's a heat pump, serial control cable, pressure switch, it's had a bit of water in it but that's okay, taking that off actually. Um, yeah, they put it down very hard at the depot when they off offloaded it from the trailer so it's a wreck, it's all just floating around there now whole lot's moving and broken so we're going to pull it to bits see what it's like inside so the fan motor replaced at one stage it was a multi-speed fan uh, hence the different blades it's an Australian made Fasco motor not the uh, old GE ones All right, let's just try the fan out just for the hell of it there you go. amp meter barely moved special test box I made up for Brad. You can plug his air conditioners and things into it and see how many amps they're pulling. That's not a lot. I mean the amp meter is pretty substantial. Yeah, it's working. It's a bit busted though. <laughs> it is grounded too. Yeah, this should result in something more exciting. 24 volt contactor coil across 240 volt. Uh, the contact is pretty much ruined from being out in the weather so long, so let's see what comes out of it. Ooh, <laughs> that just took the main breaker immediately. Oh, I guess I should have taken the time to set up a ballast. But then again, I'm guessing that might be because there's a lot of water and corrosion inside it too. Normally they buzz and click and carry on and then smoke. Oh well, contact is fried. What can, else can we fry? I won't touch the compressor yet, I want to ohm that. And that can be next, let's get the top off it. Okay, that was probably the dumbest thing ever. You'd think they'd have black wires on one side of the contactor and red on the other, but they've got red and black on both sides. So all I've done is pulled a red and a black off the defrost board going to the contactor and not realise they're paired up on the same terminal block. So all I've done is just put a dead short across the mains. That's why the breaker went so quick. Let's try this again, and you'll notice I'm taking the earth off so the lights don't go out. I'm saving a big video file and uploading one at the same time, so if I lose both of them, I will be pissed off. And then this thing will probably just end up back on the trailer getting crushed. The scrapyard. Okay, try number two. <laughs> that was a nice crack. I guess there was still some moisture in there. Nah, that's gone open. Oh, that was fun. I think that first crack was a bit of moisture inside it. <laughs> this thing has been sitting out in the weather for quite a while. Okay, I'm getting down into the beast. Uh, first notes that fan is definitely not factory. That's a specially modified or made replacement fan. There must have been something horribly wrong with the old one. And they've definitely swapped the motor out as well. So I'll hang on to that one. Um, under that protective foam dome is the compressor. It's got a name or something printed on it. It's a scroll compressor, obviously. It's got a high pressure on the top and low pressure down there. Ugh, fiberglass. Yeah, it's a Copeland scroll. Hmm. I'll work on getting that out without getting fiberglass everywhere. TX valves out here instead of on the indoor coil. It's got a pressure, sorry, a temperature switch on it. Um, that's interesting. Oh yeah, the pressure switch, the factory pressure switch has been cut off 
and disconnected down there and they've installed an aftermarket one in, in its place probably because it's died or at least that one's adjustable that one's not um, that connector goes to the reversing valve nothing special there there's wires going into the compressor and a ground strap on the suction line yeah try and rip into this thing yeah what a mess now this thing here is a uh, Scott brand ac acoustic cap acoustic deadening material never seen one before but apparently those are press studs <laughs> I probably could have popped them apart and saved it, but it doesn't matter. I don't need it for anything. This looks like it's got... No, it's just water. I thought it was oil. Uh, yeah, it's a Copeland compliant scroll. We'll get a better look at that once I get these coils out of here. We'll go. Either undo that or just sever all these lines. I'm only scrapping it, so... I'll uh, rip it apart, cut everything off, and we'll have a look at the compressor. Actually, I'm going to open the compressor first and just see if it's any good. Might try and rev it up while it's still com connected. Yeah, it's getting bloody windy now. It's a dual layer coil, unlike the last one I got, which is only single layer. Okay, this little line going to the uh, low pressure side as a service valve in the back panel was rubbed through, almost rubbed through in several places. It's actually dark with oil or something. I'm guessing that's why. I poached that one before and it didn't take much to make a hole in it. And there, 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 and there. That side there and there. So it's about five places. And that's just a service valve. Um, yeah. There's a coil I blew up by accident. <laughs> um, the reset switch. I pushed it before and it reset, so it's obviously going off early. Um, that's the liquid, liquid line out. That's the suction line. TX valve by Parker Hennepin. Contains its own check valve for re reversing the cycle. Yeah. I'm get this metal grill off and remove this coil, I think. I'm try and just cut it all the way up there, rip all them off. I'm not going to salvage any of this. Might play with a compressor, that's about it. Okay, got the coil off. It's a remarkably heavy one. Still a bit of oil and even a little bit of refrigerant migrating out of the system. It was probably recovered not long ago. Um, it takes ages for refrigerant to finish migrating out of oil and tight spaces in the compressor. Um, yeah, this is a liquid line. It's got a bi-flow filter dryer on it by Alco Controls. Uh, that's the thermal expansion valve which has a bypass back to the suction side. That's the sensing bulb. When this this sensing bulb detects a drop in temperature on this line here and adjusts the refrigerant flow accordingly, it's like an adjustable needle and seat with a uh, thermal sensing diaphragm on it or a power head as they call it. That's just a liquid splitter. It either, if, if it's running in reverse, evaporation starts here and it starts going through the coil in through these little tubes. And if it's running as an air conditioner, the refrigerant's condensed into a liquid through the coil and it comes, it combines through here, goes to this side of the expansion valve and starts evaporating. So technically, it's actually evaporating as it goes through there. Probably not the best idea, but it works. In theory, well, it's a bit hard with uh, heat pumps to put a uh, dryer only where the liquid goes because on this part of the system either side can be liquid and evaporation or liquid and evaporation. So, yeah, that's about how it goes. And again, I've done a tutorial on how reversing valves work, but you've got your high pressure coming in out of the compressor from here. Uh, this valve uses high pressure from the high pressure line to push a sled inside either way so it's diverting high pressure gas to here which is the condenser or it's pushing it out here which is the indoor unit. If, it, if it's running in heat this line will see high pressure high temperature gas and you will get liquid coming back through here. 
So it's just reversing the, the role of each unit. Quite simple. Oh, guess I better finish chopping this thing up and get it out of the way.